Episode number 161. All this was seen in a moment, as the vision of a drowning man, or of any human creature at any very great pass, could see a world, if it were there. They drew back from the window, and the doctor looked for explanation in his friend's ashy face. They are, Mr. Lorry whispered the words, glancing fearfully round at the locked room, murdering the prisoners. If you are sure of what you say, if you really have the power you think you have, as I believe you have, make yourself known to these devils, and get taken to La Force. It may be too late, I don't know, but let it not be a minute later. Dr. Manette pressed his hand, hastened bareheaded out of the room, and was in the courtyard when Mr. Lorry regained the blind. His streaming white hair, his remarkable face, and the impetuous confidence of his manner, as he put the weapons aside like water, carried him in an instant to the heart of the concourse at the stone. For a few moments there was a pause, and a hurry, and a murmur, and the unintelligible sound of his voice, and then Mr. Lorry saw him, surrounded by all, and in the midst of a line of twenty men long, all linked shoulder to shoulder, and hand to shoulder, hurried out with cries of, Live the Bastille prisoner! Help for the Bastille prisoners kindred in La Force! Room for the Bastille prisoner in front there! Save the prisoner in Remond at La Force! And a thousand answering shouts. He closed the lattice again with a fluttering heart, closed the window and the curtain, hastened to Lucy, and told her that her father was assisted by the people, and gone in search of her husband. He found her child, and Miss Pross with her, but, it never occurred to him to be surprised by their appearance until a long time afterwards, when he sat watching them in such quiet as the night knew. Lucy had, by that time, fallen into a stupor on the floor at his feet, clinging to his hand. Miss Pross had laid the child down on his own bed, and her head had gradually fallen on the pillow beside her pretty charge. Oh the long, long night, with the moans of the poor wife. And oh the long, long night, with no return of her father, and no tidings. Twice more in the darkness the bell at the great gate sounded, and the eruption was repeated, and the grindstone whirled, and spluttered. What is it? cried Lucy, affrighted. Hush! The soldiers' swords are sharpened there, said Mr. Lorry. The place is national property now, and used as a kind of armory, my love. Twice more in all, but, the last spell of work was feeble, and fitful. Soon afterwards the day began to dawn, and he softly detached himself from the clasping hand, and cautiously looked out again. A man, so besmeared that he might have been a sorely wounded soldier creeping back to consciousness on a field of slain, was rising from the pavement by the side of the grindstone, and looking about him with a vacant air. Shortly, this worn-out murderer displayed in the imperfect light one of the carriages of Monseigneur, and, staggering to that gorgeous vehicle, climbed in at the door, and shut himself up to take his rest on its dainty cushions. The great grindstone, earth, had turned when Mr. Lorry looked out again, and the sun was red on the courtyard. But, the lesser grindstone stood alone there in the calm morning air, with a red upon it that the sun had never given, and would never take away.